The January transfer window is open, and if you haven't already seen it, I've done a video on Manchester United and who I think Man United should be looking at, the key areas that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer could strengthen in between now and the end of the season. If you haven't watched that video, there is a link at the end of this video, so make sure you watch it. But now my attention is focused on the current Manchester United squad. According to the official Manchester United website, there are 29 first team players in that squad. But come next season, who should still be at Manchester United? Who should Ole Gunnar Solskjaer be thinking maybe about selling in January? Who should Solskjaer's replacement, if he doesn't get the full-time job, be thinking about selling in next summer? I'm going to run through the full squad and give my opinion on every player as to whether United should be keeping them or selling them, either in this transfer window or in the summer. Now, before I get started, if you are new to United People's TV, make sure you hit the subscribe button down there, hit the notifications bell as well, get involved in the channel. But let's get straight to it. So we'll start with the goalkeepers. David De Gea, I don't have to explain this one. Of course, United want to keep him. Keeping David De Gea over the last four or five years where we've been massively mediocre has been one of the greatest things that Manchester United have done in the transfer window. Simple as that. De Gea still being at the club is a masterstroke. And now that we've got a manager in who seems to understand the way that United are playing, United have sacked Mourinho, maybe the club's going to restructure and get the right things in place, bring the right players in. Keeping De Gea is a priority. Absolute priority. You've seen the difference that Alisson has made to that Liverpool team. Taking De Gea out of this United team would do the exact opposite. And United cannot afford to let that happen. So De Gea, of course he should be staying, but United need to make sure that happens, hopefully with a new contract. As for Lee Grant, I always saw Lee Grant as a bit of a strange signing by Jose Mourinho. He did it, I think, to allow Joe Pereira to go on loan to, I think, Vitorious over in the Portuguese league. But Lee Grant was a random signing and I don't think Lee Grant should be here next year. In Sergio Romero, we've got a brilliant number two. And in Joel Castro Pereira, I think we've got a good young goalkeeper. I'd rather see him come back into the squad next year as our third choice. Maybe, though, he wants to chase first-team football. But for me, Lee Grant was a strange signing in the first place, and I don't see any reason why he should stay come next season. As for Sergio Romero, I hope he stays. You know, you couldn't ask for a better number two. He really has been a consummate professional, absolutely professional, the way he's approached being a second choice goalkeeper. Never really said too much, never really come across as unhappy, angry, plays good when he plays. Sergio Romero is an excellent number two and United are lucky to have him. And I really do hope that Romero stays on as our number two. And I also would keep Joel Pereira as well. He's only 22, an excellent prospect, was very good with our under 23s and under 19s when he played with them. Gone on loan to Vitorious, haven't been watching them, so I don't know how he's been playing. But I suppose it all depends on what happens with Romero and Grant. I think Grant should be sold. And if Romero does decide that he wants to play first team football, he's good enough to do that. If he does then go and chase it, maybe Pereira can become the second choice keeper at Manchester United. That would be a step up for him. I'd like to see United keep hold of him. But if Pereira wants to chase first team football, I would expect him to be sold as well. But I'd rather keep him. He's on my keep list. Next up, we take a look at the defenders in Manchester United's squad. Plenty here that I know you will think need to be sold. But for me, Victor Lindelof should be staying at the club. You know, towards the end of Jose Mourinho and certainly under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, we've seen a new look, Victor Lindelof. He was pretty poor in his first season, but some players struggle in their first year when coming into the Premier League from a different country. And Lindelof certainly struggled. But he's looked really, really good in our last few games. And if he can, can, you t and if he can continue that form between now and the end of the season, he's going to be one of our first choice centre-backs next year, even if we bring a new one in. But for me, Lindelof continues to grow as a player. And I think he's got a really high ceiling, really high potential to be a top draw centre-back. So I would absolutely keep Victor Lindelof at the club. As for Eric Bai, I'd also keep him too. I think out of all the defenders at the club, he's the one with the highest ceiling, the highest potential. I think he can, he can go on to become an elite player, but he has to curb his enthusiasm. He's far too rash, far too often. And that's not a characteristic you want in a centre-back. You want your centre-back to be reliable, consistent, there when you need him, making no mistakes. Now, when Bai is on form, he does all of that and more. No-nonsense Vidic type of defender. 
That's why United fans have got on with him so well. But he's hot-headed. He loves, he loves jumping into a challenge, got plenty of red cards, missed time challenges left, right and centre. He needs to stop that. That needs to be coached out of him. United needs to do that, but he himself needs to realise that that needs to stop if he's ever going to become an elite player. But for me, I would definitely keep by at the club. That, unfortunately, isn't the case for Phil Jones as far as I'm concerned. This has to be the summer where United finally say goodbye to Phil Jones. For the last five, six years, we've been stuck in a permanent Phil Jones cycle of watching him play two or three times. You think, oh, look, it's looking good. Form is there. Then he gets an injury. Then he disappears for a couple of months. Then he comes back, rinse and repeat the cycle. Unfortunately for Phil Jones, his injuries have stopped him fulfilling the potential that Fergie once hailed him as the new Duncan Edwards. That was a bit overzealous from Fergie. And I do feel that it's a shame for Jones because I genuinely think he could have been, oh, he was amazing at Blackburn. He really, really was. And he was good at the start of United, but the injuries have held him back. And for me now is the time to be ruthless. United were ruthless in sacking Mourinho. We could have waited until the end of the season. Would have been a lot easier and prettier, I suppose. But we didn't. We got rid of Mourinho because he wasn't right. Jones isn't right, so we need to get rid of him. And for me, the same goes for Chris Smalling. Now, there are other defenders I would sell ahead of Chris Smalling, absolutely. But the fact that Smalling signed a new contract with Manchester United doesn't deter me from saying that I would like to see Smalling sold. Smalling, on form, a pretty reliable defender. But for me, he's not good enough to be part of a Premier League winning team anymore. Chris Smalling, is incapable of playing out from the back with the ball. And that's what we need. Again, I keep, I keep talking about Liverpool, but they make good signings in good areas. And Van Dijk, a clear example of a leader who can change a defence that looks so shit beforehand that now looks wonderful. And I think Chris Smalling is part of the problem that United have at the back. He's the most reliable defender we've got right now, and that is really indicative of the problems. Chris Smalling, once upon a time, with Phil Jones when they were both playing for England under-21s, looked like a potential future partnership for United. Years to come. It's never going to happen. And Chris Smalling's not a spring chicken anymore. What is he, 28, 29? If Phil Jones is leaving, Chris Smalling has to leave as well. United need to be ruthless. And for me, holding on to those two players who won the league under Fergie and are still here, that's not on merit. And they have to be sold. As for Marcus Rojo, I have no idea, absolutely none, how Marcus Rojo was given a new contract in March. You know, he had a pretty decent half a season under Mourinho playing as an auxiliary centre-back when we had injuries. But aside from that, Rojo's just not good enough to play for Manchester United. Yes, he's tenacious and that gets the fans on board, but he's probably our fourth choice left-back behind Luke Shaw, Ashley Young and Diogo Delot. I'd probably put all three of them above him. And he's certainly not one of our first choice centre-backs either. Rojo, for me, I'd probably sell him ahead of Jones and Smalling Rojo's absolutely got to go. And I'm sorry, Marcus, that's the way it is. You burn your toast, out you go. Now, one that might cause a little bit of controversy, I suppose, is Ashley Young. I've put him on my keep list, and a lot of you will point out the fact that I've slated Ashley Young left, right and centre, because I have. But there are so many other defenders that I would sell ahead of Ashley Young that maybe United are going to hold on to him for one more season. And one thing you can't accuse Young of is not being a good professional. Because every single game, he does give it his all. He is a good professional, he's good with the fans. Young, we could do a lot worse than Young, but saying that, we could do a lot better as well. But given that I want other defenders to be sold first, I would put Young on my keep list, only for one more season. Make that transition a little bit smoother, rather than cutting the entire squad, do it in stages. I would put Ashley Young in the second stage of that, and I'd keep him for one more season. Diogo Delot up next, I'd absolutely keep him. He should be Manchester United's first choice right back, but he isn't, and we know why. He's an excellent prospect. You know, we saw him, I think it was his debut away at Young Boys in the Champions League. The sort of defender he can be when he's confident and on form. Somebody who actually can run past a player, somebody who actually can cross a ball, but is also a capable defender. Albeit sometimes he's been caught out of positions this season, but it's his first year, just like Lindelof last year. I'm giving him a grace period. Delot should be kept, absolutely, and I think he can be United's first choice right back next year. Just like Luke Shaw should be United's first choice left back next year. 
it seems that, touch wood, the bad times are behind Luke Shaw. It's been a rough, rough, rough few years for him, ever since that leg break away at PSV. But this year, under Mourinho as well, he's looked much, much better. And that left-hand side of Pogba, Martial and Shaw is clearly United's best threat going forward, and Shaw is a big part of that. Now, I want to see United... One of the main things we've got to do is get our fullbacks playing like modern day fullbacks, like Guardiola does with his Man City team. And Luke Shaw and Diogo Delot, for me on paper, can be those types of defenders, really attacking types of fullbacks. And I want to see Shaw kept next year. I don't want to see a replacement come in. Now, somebody I would keep at the club as well is Timothy Fosu Mensa. He didn't do too much of note on loan at Fulham, but I watched Fosu Mensa quite a lot with the under 18s the under 19s since he joined from Ajax. And he was so, so dominant at those ages. I want to see him given an extended run inside a first team squad. And I think Ali Gunnar Solskjaer might be the right man to get the best out of him. I think Fosu Mensa has all the ability in the world to become an excellent defensive midfielder. He's got all the physical attributes, but he needs to be coached. Positionally, he's poor. He could be a right back as well. But for me, I'd like to see him play as a defensive midfielder or as a right back. One of the two, he's versatile as well, another reason to keep him. But I'd absolutely like to see Fosu Mensa kept, at least for one more season. Unlike, unfortunately, Antonio Valencia, still the captain of Manchester United, but again, that's not on merit. It's really, really painful to watch Antonio Valencia play football now, isn't it? A player who has done so much at United, overcame that leg break as well, came back, reinvented himself as a right back, and was brilliant. But he needs to know when it's gone too far, just like Gary Neville did at half-time against West Brom, he's sat in the toilet and he thought, yep, I'm done at Manchester United. I think Valencia needs to have that conversation with himself now because it's, it's just so painful to watch him. He can't take it past the man anymore. He can't cross a ball anymore. He's always caught out of position. Despite his athleticism, he seems to be caught out of position more often than not a right back. I just don't see a reason why Valencia should be starting anymore other than the fact that he trains really hard and from a manager's perspective, that's what's important. He shouldn't be captain of Manchester United and he shouldn't be playing next season for Manchester United either. Sorry, Antonio. And in terms of being sold, I think the same thing has to be said for Matteo Darmian. He's been a bit of a ghost player in the last like 18 months, hasn't he? Had a couple of fleetingly good appearances. Will be remembered, I think, for that performance he had in the Europa League final against Ajax. It was brilliant in that. But Darmian's never really fulfilled his potential. He started off sensationally well. I thought, Christ, we've got a new Gary Neville here. And then it all went downhill from Arsenal away. I think we lost 3-0. And he never, ever fully recovered. Seems like Van Gaal fell out of trust with him. Mourinho never really trusted him. Which is a surprise, I suppose. I thought Darmian, an Italian-type player, would be very good for Mourinho. But it just didn't work. He's a loyal John O'Shea-type player. Ask him to play centre-back, he'll play centre-back. Ask him to play left-back, he'll play left-back. Right wing-back, anywhere. He'll say yes to it. And maybe that's a reason to keep him in the squad, but I think United could sell Darmian and buy a better utility player. So for me, this summer should see Darmian leave as well. Or January, if a good bid comes in. But one player I certainly don't want United to sell is Axel Twanzebe. He's had a sensational loan spell at Aston Villa. And having watched him with the under-18s when he was captain alongside Rochelle and Williams, they went like 530 minutes without conceding. Still, I think that's the under-18s record. Tuanzebe is genuine captain material and he's a genuinely top-draw centre-back. And at a club where we've still got Phil Jones, Chris Smalling, Marcus Rojo and now Matteo Darmian playing centre-back, it's a bit criminal that Tuanzebe is not there to get his opportunity because he certainly would under Solskjaer. I'd like to see Tuanzebe get pushed through into that first team mix next year. And that's another reason why I'd like to see Smalling, Jones and Rojo sold so that someone like Tuanzebe can take up the minutes that they are at the moment. I want to see him kept because I genuinely think he can become an excellent player for Manchester United if given the opportunity. So that's the defenders done. I'd like to see Rojo go, Darmian, Jones, Smalling. Who would you like to see sold? Let me know in the comments below. But now we move on to the midfielders. It's a nice easy one to get started with Paul Pogba. Absolutely keep Paul Pogba. In the lot under Solskjaer, right, he's started to look like the Pogba that we've all wanted to see every single week. Now, a player can't play that good every single week. Or if you can, your name's Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo. 
Pogba's not at that level yet, but we've seen a rejuvenated Pogba under Solskjaer. And when you let the shackles off Pogba, he can control a game. Goals and assists and involved in the tempo, but like Paul Scholes, I suppose, in that respect. The team should be built around Paul Pogba next year. So for me, absolutely, he should be staying. Now, would I keep Juan Mata? Yes, I would. Now, Juan Mata is a slow, pretty lethargic player, but I don't think United have another midfielder like him. Somebody who just loves having possession, small, intricate passing, excellent at the slowing the game down, and that's a, a tribute I think Mata needs to stay in the squad for, because I don't think anybody else can do it like he can. Plus, he's just a genuinely nice guy. And that always comes across well with the fans. I would like to see Mata kept for another season, at least, because I think he offers something that none of these midfielders do. And you can't play every single game, all guns blazing, counter-attacking football, fast-flowing. Sometimes you have to slow it down. That's why I keep Juan Mata in this squad. As for Jesse Lingard, absolutely keep him. You know my feelings on Jesse Lingard. I think he has been given so much over-criticism in the last couple of years from United fans. I think fans have been massively hypercritical of Lingard. Probably because he's not too young anymore. But Lingard, in the last 18 months especially, has massively grown as a player. He's improved his final product. And that's a big, big thing. And for me, the most exciting attacking three at Manchester United right now is Lingard, Martial and Rashford. Because there's so much movement. No United player in this squad has better off-the-ball movement than Jesse Lingard. Defenders can't defend against him because he's permanently moving. That pulls defenders out of shape. That gives United opportunities to attack. It's not something you see out of every single player. Absolutely not. And for me, Lingard should be not only kept in this squad, but kept as an integral part of this squad. You may disagree with me there, but I've st I love Jesse Lingard. I want to see him keep his place in the team. Now, as for Andreas Pereira, I could see Pereira being sold, you know, if he doesn't really improve between now and the end of the season, but I would give Pereira another crack at the whip, but not as a defensive midfielder. Mourinho turned him into a number six because he didn't really have too many options there, and he, had, he got a couple of games. That's not where Pereira is naturally good at. He's a central midfielder, more of an attacking midfielder, or playing on the left wing where he did for Valencia, but as an attacking midfielder, more of a number 10. That's where you can get something out of Andreas Pereira. I wouldn't want to see him sold, not next summer, maybe the summer after, but I would think he deserves another opportunity under another manager. I think he still can become a good player for Manchester United. Now, somebody who really hasn't lived up to expectations so far is Fred, but I wouldn't sell him. Just like Victor Lindelof, Fred has struggled in his first year. And if I've given Lindelof that first season and stood by him, and now he's look how much better Lindelof is in the second year, you've got to give Fred the same treatment. This style of football should bring more out of Fred. We haven't seen it so far, but I'm confident that Fred can fulfil his potential as well. Hopefully, he does not become another Cleverson and gets sold on. I think Fred can, but he has to want it just as much as the club does. And it's down to him to make the most of his opportunities. But for me, I wouldn't sell Fred this summer. I think that'll be one season too soon. Next up, Ander Herrera. I love Ander Herrera. I've said it. Always have. Just love the way he plays football for Man United. Not necessarily the best central midfielder in the world. I think we could probably sell him and bring in maybe a better player in that position. But Herrera's attitude has been standout for me in the last couple of years when we've seen so many passengers in this United squad. And that's not going to be forgotten by me. I want to see Herrera stay in this squad. I think he's an excellent squad player and happy to have that role. If somebody came in and he pushed him to the side a little bit, just like he did under Mourinho, he hardly played a game for a long time and then came back in and was just as tenacious. Not as effective, but just as tenacious. And I want to see Herrera kept in this squad. And I've said it last time, I've said it previously, he is captain material, I think. There certainly aren't that many captains in this squad, but for me, Herrera does have the ability, not that I think he's going to be at any time soon, but that's why I keep him. He's got that sort of attitude and approach, and this United squad should not be getting rid of players like that. On the other hand, players we should be getting rid of are players like Maro and Fellaini, and absolutely the time has to come for him this summer. A relic of the David Moyes era, not by... His fault of his own, I suppose, but Fellaini 
No. I don't want United to be playing football that plays to the strengths of Fellaini anymore. And Solskjaer certainly doesn't do that. He's played a few minutes here or there, but the time for Fellaini has gone by. Van Gaal, Mourinho, he scored plenty of late winners, plenty of decent memories from Fellaini, plenty of shit ones as well, mind. I don't want Fellaini to be here next year. It's as simple as that. It doesn't really need to be explained, I suppose, but let me know what you think about Fellaini. Would you still keep him in the squad? I also wouldn't keep Nemanja Matic. Now, he may have had a slight resurgence under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and looks good, but I think Man United can sell Matic and bring in a defensive midfielder that is pretty much better than him in every single regard. Matic, Mourinho's most loyal lieutenant, has now lost his commander. And this summer should be the time when Matic has moved on. You know, he was brilliant at the start when he played in the midfield two alongside Pogba, went in a massive dip, and now, I don't even know what Matic is anymore. He's just too stagnant as a midfielder. And for me, especially when you're looking at the midfield we're playing now, which relies on one defensive holding midfielder, we need someone with far more mobility than Matic. And because of that, I would sell him. And if I was being completely ruthless, I'd probably sell Scott McTominay as well. But I think he'll be given another year at United. Again, for the reasons why I'm keeping Ashley Young in the defence, I'd probably keep McTominay in midfield. I think there's other midfielders you could probably sell first. And because McTominay is a United Academy graduate, I think he'll be given a little bit more time, maybe one more season to really prove his worth to the first team squad. I wouldn't be at all surprised if he was sold, but for me, I would keep him in the squad, just at least for another year. So that's the goalkeepers that we've looked at. We looked at the defenders, the midfielders. Now it's on to the attackers, and for me, it gets a bit confusing when you look at the attackers. Start with Alexis Sanchez. I've put him in my keep list, but I could easily have put Sanchez in the sell list as well. It all depends on what we see between now and the end of the season from Sanchez. If we see the sort of Arsenal Sanchez that was hungry, scoring goals, world-class finisher, keep him, absolutely keep him. If we see a sulky Chilean striker dropping his shoulders, not doing much for the team, Sell him. United can replace him with someone better. But Sanchez has looked good the first couple of games under Solskjaer. Obviously got an injury concern at the moment, so that hamstring's hampering him. But it's between now and the end of the season, Sanchez's career at United for me is going to be defined. If he's mint and he's wicked, keep him. But if he isn't, absolutely sell him. I'm also not as equally torn, but torn about Romelu Lukaku. I've got him on my keep list. And I think Lukaku is a, is a great goal scorer. Fantastic. He scored 30 in his debut season at Manchester United. Absolutely nothing to be sniffed at. But I think we could replace Lukaku with somebody who's better suited to the fast-paced football that we are playing right now. That's not to say that Lukaku doesn't have pace. But I just want somebody who's got a bit more about him than a poacher's finish. I think when you're playing with a fluid front three, you need players to be able to play with the ball at their feet, to hold it up, to bring other players into play. Lukaku, you get the best out of him when you launch it over the top, let him run onto it, uses his strength. Sometimes he finishes, sometimes he doesn't. Same goes for any striker. But Lukaku's not very good at intricate football. You can't use him playing quick triangles. That's not the Lukaku style of play. And I think that goes against the style of play that we're seeing under Solskjaer and that hopefully we will see from next season onwards, whether that's under Solskjaer or Pochettino, Jardim, Zidane, anybody. But I wouldn't be surprised if Lukaku's still here next year, still a great goal scorer. But I do feel United could sell him, use the money, and bring in a better replacement that's better suited to the style of play that we've got. Because if you look at the other two strikers, I'm going to put them both down at the same time. Because Marcus Rashford and Anthony Martial, just like Paul Pogba, they're three players that I want this United team to be built around because they play the United way. Rashford, man, I love watching that kid play. He's sensational. He really, really is. And I just love him. It's not just because of his goals. It's because of his attitude, his approach, his ability with the ball at his feet as well. He's not just a finisher. And the same goes for Martial. He's a United player. Lethal, exciting, fast, runs at a defender's gets you off your seat in Old Trafford. They're the types of attackers that we should be building our teams around. And that's maybe another reason why I'd like to see Lukaku be sold. 
But looking at Rashford and Martial, you keep both of them in the squad. Absolutely. Martial would improve most teams in the Premier League. And for me, we should be building this squad next season around that three. Pogba, Rashford and Martial. So, that's the whole squad done there. As you can see, that would leave United with a squad of 20 players with eight being sold. Now, that is quite a lot. So I wouldn't be surprised if United didn't do that in one single summer. But if we did, and we were that ruthless, like Guardiola was at City when in that, going into that second season, just got rid of who we didn't like. United need to do that. We were ruthless in getting rid of Mourinho, and I think we should do the same with our players that have been lingering around the club just that little bit too long. And it, as I said, eight might be a bit much, but I think it can happen. And if you add three or four new signings into that, 20 existing players, three or four new signings, that is a squad that will be capable of winning the Premier League. But what do you think? You know, who should Ole Gunnar Solskjaer keep if he's got the job? Who should he sell in January? Who should he sell in the summer? If it's not Solskjaer and somebody else comes in, who should they keep or sell? I want to know what you think in the comments below. So let me know. You can write down a whole list if you want, or just do individuals and talk about them. But what United players do you want to see kept at the club next year? And what United players do you want to see sold? Let me know in the comments below. As always, if you're new to United People's TV and you're still here, congratulations. Drop a like on the video there and subscribe and turn the notifications on. But until next time, take it easy.